Welcome back. I'm Jane Rogers. Inflammaging, a term coined at the turn of the 21st century, is something that you don't want. But we're susceptible to this as we age. Studies show inflammaging usually starts around age 50, with pro-inflammatory markers in our blood and tissues going up. Chronic inflammation causes decreases in NAD. Decreases in NAD levels, we've learned, is not good. You'll recall from the lessons on NAD precursors like resveratrol and NMN that it's critical to keep NAD and thus sirtuin enzymes, which the NAD fuels, at a good strong level to prevent cancer, heart disease, and dementia, the diseases of aging. So, now we have inflammation that comes around after age 50 to try to wipe out our efforts to boost NAD. It is worth fighting the fight against inflammation by finding out if you have it and then figuring out what's causing it. Many don't even realize they have this problem. You can't just look at somebody and see this bodily inflammation. It is not like a puffiness that you, it's something blood tests only reveal. Blood tests like interleukin-6. IL-6, tumor necrosis factor alpha, TNFA, TGF-beta-1. That is short for transforming growth factor beta-1. These are some of the tests that can reveal a high inflammatory load, but most docs don't order these for these patients. And I've found unless it's requested and having too much bodily inflammation is a critical risk factor for the diseases of aging. Another test is high sensitivity C-reactive protein, HSCRP. This detects inflammation in the vascular system. Here's Dr. Lisa Broyles. So the next thing that we want to look at is your inflammation levels. If your blood vessels are nice and smooth, then even though you have too much cholesterol, it's going to flow right through those blood vessels and not form plaque. But if the inner lining called the endothelium is, is irritated and rough, then it's kind of like Velcro and it's more prone for plaque to stick and then start to build up and eventually clot off an artery. And what causes that Velcro type stickiness is inflammation. So the Boston Heart Test looks at several markers for inflammation in your blood vessels, one of them being something called high sensitivity CRP. It'll be on your paperwork HS-CRP. It's also referred to as a cardiac CRP. This number should be under one. Interestingly, I've seen a lot of people that have just recovered from COVID and their HS-CRP numbers have been as high as 40 to 70 after they've had COVID, which shows just a a massive amount of inflammation in the va blood vessels, but specifically the HSCRP is looking at the cardiac blood vessels, the blood vessels supplying the heart and the aorta. Dr. Broyles went on to say omega-3s will help put a fire blanket on inflammation. There's three omega-3s, the DHA, the EPA, and the ALA. Your body cannot make its own ALA. It has to get it from supplements or from diets. Salmon is a wonderful source as long as it's wild caught because we want it to be good for you and not have a bunch of toxins in it. So wild caught salmon is excellent. I tell my patients to eat it at least once a week. You also want to eat raw walnuts. Unfortunately, if your walnuts have been roasted and salted, they're no longer good for you as far as the omega-3 levels. The other thing is flax seeds. And people say, oh, well, I, I have ground flax or I have whole flax in my baking items. Neither of those, unfortunately, are a good source of omega-3s when it comes to vascular health. You really need to freeze your flax seeds and in the morning take a tablespoon, throw them in your coffee grinder or your herb grinder nice and fresh and put that ground flax in food or water each day. And that freshly ground flax has much higher levels of omega-3 than using it any other way. So omega-3s will help to get your inflammatory load down. And many studies like this one show there is something else that should be considered to reduce inflammation. Drinking hydrogen-rich water a couple times a day. Hydrogen-rich water or molecular hydrogen, as it's sometimes called, is regular water with hydrogen gas added. The hydrogen gas, for me, comes in a tablet that dissolves in water. Personally, I do this several times a day to try to keep my 
inflammation low. As I get older, too much bodily inflammation is something I'm always battling. Hydrogen-rich water can reduce inflammation by down-regulating pro-inflammatory cells and up-regulating anti-inflammatory cells, fighting oxidative stress and free radicals that lead to aging. Its safety profile shows that it's well-tolerated too. With that ability, hydrogen-rich water can also help with something else, and that's air travel. When you fly, there's increased radiation at 35,000 feet. You're closer to the sun. Hydrogen-rich water has been shown to mitigate up to 80% of the damage caused from being at high altitudes for hours. Personally, I drink a cup of hydrogen-rich water every two hours when I'm flying. I hope this was helpful. May we all live longer better in health. Have a great day.